schematic diagram tool that I'm using right now is called Refox. So you can find it in the, this video description and I have a couple of videos in which tells you how you can download schematic diagram. So I'm go going to put all the, the links in this video description so that you can download different uh, schematic diagrams and bit mapping. So this video I'm going to put in a lot of work on how you can read schematic diagram. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know in reading schematic diagram. So and i'm going to do that just because this will be the only video on how you can read schematic diagram so make sure you do focus on this video so before we start i'm going to tell you three things in which you need to know you really need to know before you start reading schematic diagram so before we first do that let me tell you what is schematic diagram schematic diagram is a layout of every electronic component circuit where serve as a guide on how circuit functions or work so all these lines you see here tells you how this IC function, where this IC is heading to, or how, how the IC, where the IC is going to, you know what I'm saying? So first thing you need to know when you wanna, first thing you need to know when you wanna know how to, you can read schematic diagram. The first thing will be part number. And this is the part number that we are talking about. So if you look carefully right here, you will see that this diagram right here is actually a PCB which is full of numbers and the second thing we will talk on will be schematic which is this which is these lines right here you see lines you see some symbols you see some kind of shape stuff you will talk about that this is the main schematic stuff that we will be talking about and the third thing we will talk on which will be the last thing will be bit mapping I think you are familiar with this. I have uploaded several videos on how you can get tools like this, like this bit, map, bit mapping tool right here. So first, what is path number? This path number is very important when reading schematic diagram. For you to know, really know how you can completely read schematic and understand how you can solve your problem using schematic diagram, you will need this path number. This path number is just like bit map like this part number is exactly like this bit mapping but the difference is that this part number only shows the part which the IC or the component is mounted on the motherboard meanwhile a bit mapping shows where it's mounted and where it's going to you understand what I'm saying right so let me just show you how you gonna you'll be using this path number for example if I come right here to schematic diagram then I check on here you will see that this diagram right here which will be the diagram that we are we will be working on is the backlight IC this is the backlight diagram of the Huawei P20 so what is the, the the help of path number right here for example if there is no backlight on your P20 and I check here you will notice that this little box right here is the backlight IC and for you to know where this backlight IC is mounted on the PCB, you will need a path number diagram or a bit mapping. So for example, this number right here is the backlight IC number. So the number is U1701. So let's check on where this backlight IC is on the PCB. So if I come right here, then I type in the U1701, then I click on search. then. I zoom in then I zoom in the path diagram you will notice that this part right here is being marked with a yellow color which means that this is the backlight IC on the PCB so let's give it a try on bit mapping so let me just copy this number right here then bring it here to bit mapping yeah it's already here already so if I click on search on this bit mapping you will see that it automatically takes me to the IC it automatically takes me to the IC right here so this IC right here is the backlight IC you understand so reading mobile phone schematic you don't just have to have this uh, schematics and lines all over because if you only have this schematic right here you won't understand anything you will know where this coil is on the PCB. You will know where this capacitor is on the PCB. You understand? So right now, let's get into the schematic, which is the real stuff. So let's talk about symbols. Because for you to read schematic diagram and follow and solve your problem, you will need to know symbols of all components. 
For example, you will need to know the symbol of a coil. You will need to know a symbol of a resistor in a diagram. Let me just zoom in so that you will see well. When you see this symbol right here, I don't know if you are seeing it well, which is like a, a wrapping stuff. I don't know how to call it, but just understand. When you see this symbol or you see letter L on any diagram, on any diagram, you just need to have to know that this is an inductor. You just have to know that that's an inductor. You can identify it with this symbol. So let me check it on this iPhone 6S Plus schematic. Uh, yeah, it's clear right here. Let me just give you an explanation of the symbols right here. So when you see this symbol, which is like a zigzag, that's a resistor symbol. You just have to know that this is a resistor. When you see this symbol, these lines right here, two lines which are not connected, you just have to know that that's a capacitor symbol. And you must see letter C around it. When you see letter C, just know that it stands for a capacitor. When you see letter R, just know that it stands for a resistor. This, uh, this is the symbol of an inductor, which is a coil. When you see this symbol right here, when you see these symbols on a PCB, you just have to know that this is an inductor, which is a coil. So, for example, if we are here, we are trying to solve backlight problem on this PCB which is a Huawei P20 PCB if you wanna solve backlight problem though this this uh, schematic right here does not show the voltage so now reading schematic diagram I will just show you how you can read schematic diagram it's all about understanding what these lines are how the lines work and how you can read them it's very simple so make sure you listen here carefully for example this VPAD right here, when you see something that says VPAD, so when you see something like this VPAD right here, when I see this VPAD, I already know that this voltage here is from the battery connector, or this voltage here is 3.7 volt that it's anyhow connected to the battery connector. And these lines right here shows that this 3.7 volt, just take example, this VPAD right here is the 3.7 volt, and this line is showing that it's taking this 3.7 volt to this coil right here we already talked about these symbols it's taking this 3.7 volt to this coil right here so reading schematic is like you know that there is 3.7 volt right here and you know very well that it's a coil right so if you test here and you see the 3.7 volts you are just going to come right here to the other side and see if the 3.7 volt is here because it's supposed to be here since it's a coil you know what i'm saying since, it, since it's a coil the 3.7 volt is going to pass through this coil and from this coil to this connector to this joint right here and one of the connector is going right into the backlight ic this is a backlight ic and the other one is going to the coil, to the diode, sorry. The other one is going to the diode. So this diode right here is the Bose diode. And this coil right here, you can call it a Bose coil. But this coil right here only deals with the 3.7 volt that is coming right into the IC. You know what I'm saying? So the 3.7 volts get in to this IC and comes out right to this end which is out if you see here you will see that it's in which is the 3.7 volt and when coming out from here it will be like 20 something volt it will be like it could be 25 volts you understand what i'm saying like i'm sorry because this if this pcb was showing the voltages at least you will understand very easily but just use the uh, technical mind just use the technical mind and understand it the way that I'm explaining because there are no voltages that have been written on these lines I just want you to understand that schematics you need to follow schematics you need to follow all these lines meanwhile you are following the lines you need to check on these numbers you need to check on these numbers because this D right here stands for a diode and if you check right here you will see that this is a diode symbol you know what I'm saying? So, for example, if this Huawei P20 has a backlight problem, you know very well that 
this this d3 is a pin on the backlight ic so how do i know that it's a pin so let me just go to the bit mapping it's good when you are doing schematic reading you're supposed to have the schematic and the bit mapping so that you will understand very easily easily that is why i'm trying so that you can understand everything so it the 3.7 volt is getting into the ic through this d3 pin so if i go right here and it's from the and this 3d pin is connected to this um to this coil right here which is l1701 so mark that d3 is connected to l1701 so if i come right here if i come right here this is the bag light i see then i check on this is d3 and this is L1701 which is a coil which is a, the bus coil for this charging section for, for this backlight section sorry if I click on the D3 you see what I'm saying you will see that it's connected to the coil it's connected to one side of the coil and if you check here you will see that it's actually connected to one side of the coil you will see that this joint here is connected to this side of this coil then this line goes right into the D3, which is the 3 volt, right? So if you're having backlight problem on this phone, you just have to check this coil. If there is the 3.7 volt on this coil, you understand? You're going to check the 3.7 volt on this side of this coil and check it on this side of this coil. Let me show you right here on this bit mapping. You, are go you have to check 3.7 volt on this coil on this side then check 3.7 volt on this side you know what I'm saying so if you check it on this side you will know that it's supposed to enter the IC and before you you are checking that make sure you have confirmed that this is supposed to be the amount of voltage getting into the IC I hope you are listening carefully so let's talk about the output so let's check the output voltage for example, let's say right now we know that the output voltage that's supposed to light up the bag light is 25 volt. Since you have test, since you have followed this 3 volt and see very well that it's entering this IC and it's on this other side of this coil right here, you know that this IC is supposed to generate the 25 volt that is going to light up the IC so if you check the output pin which is C3 which is C3 if you check here you will see that this you are going to follow this C3 pin to test if you will see the 25 volt and from there you will know if there is a damage on the IC or if there is an open circuit between the IC and the display connector you know what I'm saying so for you to do that you are going to use the bead mapping tool and first before you do that you need to check the component that is connected right next to the output so if you check the output which is C3 right here you will see that there is a line coming out from the C3 and it goes straight to this diode which is D07 and from the diode, diode it's connected to this capacitor which is c1703 you know what i'm saying so for you to check on that for you to know the components in which you need to check to test the 25 volt you can click on the path number then check on that if i click on the path number you you will see that this is d1701 which is the output diode which is the diode that's supposed to have that 25 volt that will light up your display and let me just show you right here on the bead mapping and this is the C3 output this is the C3 pin that is going to give us the 25 volt and it's connected from this D3 from this from this C3 pin you will see that it's connected to this diode as shown in this schematic diagram let me go again this line from this C3 is connected to D1701 diode and if you check on here you will see that when you click on the C3 you will see that it's connected to that D1701 diode so now your backlight isn't lighting up you check on here 
which is the input which is d3 we already talked about that you see the 3 volt then yet you check on this diode or this capacitors or this coil right here and you see that there is no 25 volt or there is no voltage from there hell yeah you will know that this IC has a problem from there you will know that this IC has a problem and what if you check then you see the 25 volt and it's not lighting up on the display what you will need to do is that <coughs> you are just going to come back to right to the schematic diagram then check when the output connects to the diode which is 1701 and it connects to this capacitor which is 1703 where does it go next it's connected to this capacitor you will see that it's going to this field that i see right here which is lb0 lb1704 and from this uh, component right here it's going straight to the display connector so how you are going to troubleshoot this is that you are going to use the bit mapping tool right now so here is the bit map bit mapping tool here is the g1701 which is the diode that's supposed to have to have 25 volt and here is the capacitor then here is the last component that the 25 volt is passing through to get to the display connector so if you check and then you see the 25 volt right here then you see the 25 volt right here then you check in the other side of the component which is this and you don't see the 25 volt that means that you need to change this component because this component needs to pass that 25 volt to go to the display connector for example let me show you when I click on this this is the 25 volt pins you will see that it is it is not connected it is not connected directly to the display connector there is no connect there is no direct connection with the 25 volt of D1701 to the display connector so where is the direct connection coming from it's coming from the other side of this component which is a filtered component that is right that is why they wrote lb it can be a field a coil or it can be a low value resistor but just need to you just need to understand that this component right here is supposed to pass all the voltage so you will see that from here it's connected to this pin of the it's connected to this pin of the display connector which is the backlight pin which is the pin that's supposed to send the voltage that is lighting up the backlight so I hope you do understand how to read this schematic diagram. You cannot read schematic diagram without the schematic. You cannot read it without a path number diagram or a bit mapping. Bit mapping makes it very easy. Because when you click in here, you know you, you know that this connection is going here. So what if you are checking using this schematic, but yet you see the 3.7 volt that's supposed to power up the backlight IC but yet at the output you don't see it you don't see any 25 volt like I said first you need to understand that the voltage that needs to light up the screen supposed to be 25 volt or any voltage you need to know the exact voltage so that when you are testing it will be showing you this this diagram right here is not showing but we are using an example of 25 volt so if you check the three point seven voltage which is coming in right here then you don't see any output in this C3 which this is the C3 right here which is the C3 which is connected to this component if you check and you don't see any 25 volt that means you need to change this IC there is no amplification going on in this IC which means the IC is damaged so because of that the screen cannot light up so let's talk a little about jumper you gonna do jumper when for example if this output right here which is C3 that's supposed to be 25 volt if it moves the 25 volt if you check the D1701 
and you see the 25 volt then you check on this capacitor here which is supposed to be connected to the 25 volt then you check the capacitor here and you don't see any 25 volt then from there you will know that this line here is broken and you will need to link a wire from this capacitor to this diode which is here let me show you on this bit mapping which means you will need to link a cable from this capacitor to this diode right here if you want an easy doing without any protection component then you can link the 25 volt directly to this pin di directly to this capacitor or to this point right here so this component right here is just used to filter all the the the, the additional voltage that is coming with the the main voltage that's supposed to light up the bag light you understand what i'm saying right so this component right here it resists some certain amount of current passing through it then sends only the particular voltage w which is made to pass in the component so still yet you can do jumper when you click on here and know that well that 25 volt was supposed to to be connected right here then you can still do jumper from here from this diode which is d1701 to this diode which is c1701 which is connected to this pin 5 do you understand what i'm saying right so schematic this is all about written schematic diagram i know that you can't understand all about this right now but i just wanted to give you the clue of how you can do troubleshoot using schematic diagram so the rest you can learn that by yourself when you are trying or or new things when you are trying to troubleshoot some stuff so if you are new to my channel make sure that you let me know how this you are seeing this video how you are watching my first video let me know what you think about the video and make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel for more amazing videos and if you have any problems then let me know in the comment section so that we can chat about that and don't forget to like this video